And welcome back to the Constitution Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Here we are, episode 248 of the Constitutionals Podcast. Uh, uh, but before we begin, <laughs> I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Uh, I have to introduce uh, two comedy powerhouses with multiple sets of shows behind them and work that can only be described as hilarious. I'm introducing interviews with Megan Amram and uh, Adam Devine over there for Bumper in Berlin on Peacock. Uh, Both these people are very funny and very engaging. Uh, Megan Amram, you might know her from such shows as The Simpsons, which is a show that, no joke, is currently playing on my television on FXX right now. Uh, And then uh, she is currently uh, the creator of the show, uh, uh, what is it called? Bumper in Berlin. She is a a very talented person, and I I enjoy all of her work. Uh, In fact, uh, people probably mostly know her from The Good Place, but I know her from The Simpsons. Uh, and, uh, and she's she's a, a very a, a very nice gracious person. Uh, I, I I made a joke at the, at the end of her interview saying hopefully this brings about an Emmy for Megan, which is uh, if you have been if you follow her, uh, then you know that she was campaigning for an Emmy for several years in a row. And it's just a, it's a great series. Uh, definitely check that out. But also Bumper in Berlin, very funny. It's a, a well written show and. I told this to Adam. It is a, it's a, it's a, it's a good-looking show, and it's, and it just kind of, you know, as much as it's a TV show that you can expand on the world, it kind of feels like a movie, and it feels grandiose, uh, which a lot of these streaming shows do feel like. But in particular, Bumper in Berlin is uh, definitely one of the more uh, grander feeling ones, as they say. Speaking of Adam Devine. He's a very funny guy, very, uh, very great to talk to, very gracious. Uh, behind the scenes, he's a little behind the scenes fact. I was trying. I rec- one of these interviews was recorded weeks ago, uh, and then the other one I was definitely trying to set up for a long time. Uh, anyway, Adam Devine, he's he's a, a a great talent, and he he's he jumps back into this bur- bumper role uh, perfectly. And I mentioned to him during his interview that. He plays these a lot of times. He plays these this uh, these characters that are kind of needy and uh, I would almost say pathetic. I don't want to use that word. I don't want to use pathetic, but I would almost say that where they they're kind they want to be liked. Like in uh, in workaholics, he wants to be liked, and and Pumper uh, uh, in Berlin, he wants to be liked. Uh, Uncle Grandpa, he's the coolest uh, pizza Steve ever. <laughs> But in, in Sam I Am and uh, Green Eggs and Ham, he wants to be liked by his mom, uh, or by uh, by uh, the 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 guy who play, Michael Douglas plays. <laughs> who's, who's that character? Doesn't matter. Bumper in Berlin. Check out these two interviews I did with Megan Amram and Adam Devine. Check out Bumper in Berlin on uh, Peacock if you so dare, if you so choose. It's not a scary show. I don't know why I say it like that. And when we come back, we will continue with the show. Let's go. <laughs> Megan, how's the how's the day going? I know you got to deal with a lot of this. It's going great. I feel like as the day goes on, I'm getting crazier and crazier with my answers. So hopefully, this will be really fun and exciting. <laughs> I need you. Uh, I'm not a very truthful outlet, so I need you to tell me the weirdest stuff you possibly can. <laughs> okay, great. I'll I'll be thinking <laughs> of that as you ask me questions. <laughs> how, how was it inheriting this uh, this this franchise, this universe from uh, two other powerful women like Elizabeth and Kay? Yeah, I mean that was really important to me, and it's a reason why I have been a fan of it. Is that as a young comedy writer who wanted to make female uh, comedy. Elizabeth and Kay were both people I really looked up to. I've known Kay for many years. And when I started this show, I reached out to her and was like, I want to do honor to Bumper, as if this was the most uh, serious thing of all time. But um, so I'm excited to see what she thinks of this. But, you know, it was a responsibility that I took seriously. 
Yeah, it's I, and I also noticed it's, it's your first show that you are running and EPing and in charge of. Uh, it's uh, I think that's got to be kind of like a high step for you. I mean, obviously, you come from some of the best shows on television, especially The Simpsons. But I mean, this is this is like a really, really huge uh, next leap. Yeah, I mean, like I uh, was very lucky to have written for, as you say, like a lot of different types of comedy shows. I wrote for Parks and Rec and The Good Place for cumulatively many years. And Mike Schur, who created those shows, I think like really taught me and modeled what a good showrunner is and allowed me to help run the room at The Good Place. So I felt in some ways prepared. There also were things that you just cannot anticipate um, in being thrown into a showrunner role, role in a city across the world. And it was a really good learning experience. <laughs> that's that's so awesome to hear. What what was a uh, bumper is not really you know the I mean if he was somebody I would choose to to do the spinoff of then yeah I would probably choose that big name character. But who who else would you have uh, thought of to bring in? Uh, and if if bumper was not the character that that Peacock wanted to go with, that is a good question. I think the uh, easiest person. Or I think it could have been very interesting to see a backstory of the two judges um, that Elizabeth Banks <laughs> plays and John Michael Higgins to be like, how did they get there? What is their backstory? Obviously, I'm looking for, I'm sort of drawn to the characters you don't know that much about because it makes it easier to expand their world into whatever you want it to be. So Bumper, I really liked because one, I'm obsessed with Adam Devine. But two, all we knew is that he was kind of a villain who was a little full of himself. And I thought it would be a fun challenge to uh, ease him into a more three-dimensional character. And was it, were you concerned at all about uh, Pitch Perfect, great franchise, but the acapella thing, was that ever <laughs> like, like, oh, this is, this is still not uh, as cool as it once was? Well, I would say at the risk of, maybe getting uh eaten for it is that agapella was never cool but that's what makes it cool it's not pretending to be anything it isn't and i'm a huge dork like i love musical theater i love acapella i have for many years and there's something so sincere about the people who love acapella um that just you can make fun of yourself but everyone who loves it really does love it. So um, I think for this show, you know, it is a decade after the first movie. We wanted to have some of that OG acapella, but then also have original songs, cover songs. We have an original song written by Ryan Tedder, who's like a huge songwriter. So hopefully it's got something for everyone. Hey, and maybe this will get you your Emmy. Thank you so much for saying that. That's actually the only reason I did this show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Megan, for sitting down with me. I appreciate it. It was so nice to talk to you. Have a good day. Nice to talk to you. Bye. Hey, Adam, how's it going? What's up, Chad? How's it going? Nice to meet you. I'm doing well, thank you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, I, you know, I've seen a lot of the show because it it is out officially, and uh, mm -hmm. I gotta say, congratulations! It's a gorgeous, beautiful show. It looks fantastic. I, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, that that was a big uh, part. Uh, Todd Straw Schulson, he was our director, and for the first two episodes, and he really set the tone of. Todd is a friend of mine. He directed me in Isn't It Romantic, a movie I did with Rebel. And he's just such a visual, a beautifully, he's just such a great director who captures um, the, like, he's so visual. And I wanted this to not feel like a little show. I wanted it to feel big and beautiful. And I think Todd pulled it off. Yeah, it's it's so grandiose. And uh, just like the first three movies, it's, it's, it's very funny. But uh, unlike those, it has to condense all the jokes into half an hour and and, and mm -hmm. there's a stark contrast between how the movies work and how the show works and, I, and and that's that's what really plays in your favor yeah i think uh you know with movie it's just storytelling it's a different format it, it, it's more of a slow burn uh because you got to arc 
you know, 60 minutes in and, and then get to the finish line. Uh, but with uh, a, a show, you're right. It's, it's 30 minutes long. So it, the, the pace is, is much faster, which I tend to like, you know, I, I came from TV doing workaholics and modern family. So I, I like that fast pace. Yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking of uh, workaholics, your car- bumper uh, reminds me a lot of Adam in the show and Kelvin uh, Jim Stone and Sam I am because they all share this uh, sort of desperation that they want to be liked by the people around them. And even though it's kind of variable, especially from a kid's show to this show, it it all uh, it, it's it's all uh, basically a big part of you. But not you're not desperate or anything. <laughs> no, I think that, I love playing characters like that. I love playing like especially like Adam Demand from Workaholics and Bumper from Pitch Perfect is sort of a, a, there's like a, even though they're total idiots, there's like a sweetness to them, which I really tried to bring to this, um, this version of Bumper, because last time we saw Bumper, it was seven years ago now. And you definitely saw Bumper grow in the second movie where he's actually open to having feelings with Fat Amy. And then, uh, and then now seven years later, you see like his life is just in the toilet. He hasn't done anything with his life. And I think that's relatable uh, to people to be like, I wish there was, I wish I could just pack up all my stuff right now, move to a different city and start over and like go after my dreams. And I, I think it's a little bit of wish fulfillment where Bumper gets to do that. And, you know, look, look at, look at this crazy little maniac go. Right. And, and, and also I want to know how it was like, reuniting uh not only with the character but with sarah and flula and and people that you've worked with before well flula i just love i mean i've known him now for like a decade and he's just just insanely talented super funny and i i feel like the world just needs more flula you know so uh super happy to have him be such a huge part of this series and then sarah is like i i feel like between her and rebel i'm like always surrounded by such super talented uh co-stars to act opposite against uh sarah is just one of those actors i say she's going to be like betty white she's going to be like 98 years old and still acting and still killing it uh because she's just that damn good so i'm i'm happy to be just a little blip on her amazing talented career and uh, last thing I want to ask you, is there, is there a song that you would love to tackle in this world that you have yet to do? You know, I, I, I was talking a little bit about that with Elizabeth Banks, and I was I would love to do something uh, more like Motowny because mm-hmm. I feel like that would be so fun to do, but he's never really uh, had the chance to like uh, it's usually more pop, more current pop music. But I think like Bumper doing Aretha Franklin respect, I think would be really fun, you know? Exactly. Because he gets none. No one respects this guy. <laughs> the Adam, thank you so much. We run out of time. I was going to do my cup song for you, but I, oh, just, man. I just can't. I'm so sorry. Oh, like, thank I'm you so sorry, much man. for your time. <laughs> All right. Take care, man. Nice All right. Bye. You. And we're back to the show. I just checked the audio levels if you really care about what I did there. Uh, I also meant to mention uh, Kelvin Gemstone or Righteous Gemstones. That's definitely a character that uh, wants to be liked by his family. If you watch that show, I think you should. 248, had to get that out there. And uh, gladly, I would gladly do it. Hey, speaking of Peacock, should run the timer for this, shouldn't I? I did not turn it on. Speaking of Peacock, speaking of Peacock, uh, we are going to go and talk about um, uh, the uh, from the Hollywood Reporter, Etten Vlessing. NBC Universal CEO says Peacock hit uh, 18 million subscribers. Jeff Shell told an investors conference that an ad supported streaming platform, that the ad supported streaming platform rather, was helping the media giant offset continuing declines in linear TV revenue and an advertising uh, market, quote, getting worse. 
18 million subscribers, nothing to scoff at. They've, uh, for the past, I think, couple of months, they've been doing, they've been running promotions. Like right now, you can get Peacock for uh, something like $10 for the year. I don't know. Because uh, I know I paid $20 for the year for the ad supported version. And they are ramping up uh, what I would like to describe as moving movies from Universal, like from that Universal puts out in theaters onto Peacock. And we knew this was coming, but I now am noticing it even more so with the likes of Bros, Ticket to Paradise, Nope. All three of those movies essentially came in rapid succession. Succession? Succession. Succession is the TV show. In rapid succession, <laughs> within... Uh, within you know like a week of each other and like back to back like every friday i could check and and have a, a new movie on peacock uh one of those i'd already seen two of those didn't plan on it <laughs> actually no one another one that i planned on it uh let's just say that ticket to paradise did not care for it or did not want to see it uh but you know i'll add it to the list is free <laughs> and peacock hitting 18 million subscribers is I mean, I would say no big feat for the past, you know, year they were, we were uh, talking about how, or for the past couple of months, we were talking about how Peacock is kind of a, a lost leader for the company. And, and, you know, recently they just introduced the live streaming for the ad free version, live streaming your local NBC show for the ad free version. If you have uh, Peacock without ads, you get live stream NBC. Now I pay for YouTube TV. Thing is, I kept going to Peacock going, where is where is NBC uh, 11 alive? Where is my local NBC affiliate? No. It's not there. Anyway, Shell's touting that uh that how the the company NBC Universal is coming in late to the to the streaming but that they chose the right idea for uh free freemium and then fr uh paid is it freemium if it's paid okay free free streaming freemium streaming and then five dollars and then ten dollars they, they he's 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 saying that they chose the right thing he says believe they believe in the premium video ad supported dual revenue stream essential broadcast and cable on streaming driven by key programming and i i mean you know that comes with Unfortunately, the likes of HBO, because I'm no longer employed by them, so I can say this. Uh, they keep canceling things <laughs> left and right. Canceling things left and right. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, I think when it comes down, I mean, Peacock is, is not without its own cancellations. I think when it comes down to it is that uh, they, you just need, and I've been saying this over and over again, you need to be able to have confidence in your shows and your movies and uh, not just rely on things that are make you fast money all the time. Because reality, because we've seen it, reality shows, HBO just canceled uh, a couple of reality shows. Uh, HBO Max, rather. Uh, and, and we've seen it happen before where that stuff is not um, uh, something that you can rely on. And, and uh, in fact... I think it's. I think it'll. I think it'll worsen your product. I mean, look at how many reality shows are now on Netflix. Netflix is just laden with reality shows. Uh, and in fact, now that uh, Peacock is the home for streaming of uh, Bravo, it is too it has too many reality shows. I'm never going to watch Below Deck. Uh, and 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 seeing Netflix do season five of The Circle or um, uh, what's the dating one? Uh, Lost in Love? No. The one where they're they can't see each other. That one. Anyway, I watched the first season. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. But seeing that stuff be promoted uh, in in front of my in front of my Netflix queue, which is mostly just like cartoons, <laughs> and uh, although I do watch Somebody Feeds Phil, so that's probably why I get. But I but I shouldn't even. But that's just food. I should get more food stuff. Uh, then I get, then I do get uh, dating stuff, which is insane. But like, yeah, mine is mostly cartoons and uh, old movies and old TV shows that I've already seen a thousand times. So it just doesn't matter. I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was me getting an air, trying to talk over the noise in the background here. Uh, yeah, I know it's there. I hear it. <laughs> but yeah, Peacock is is it, it is in the right spot for. They did launch with the exact thing that they probably should have because now Disney Plus has uh, ad-supported stuff, and that launched last week. Netflix has ad-supported 
uh, tiers and that or tier rather than that la- that launched uh, several weeks ago. Uh, HBO Max has it. Paramount has it. Uh, we're, we just we can't escape it. And at some point we're going to see Apple TV with it. Um, and and Prime has the free has a freebie. And and, the, and th- those are the major uh, streaming platforms. As I look at my phone here and see which ones I'm missing, uh, those are the major streaming platforms. And 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 it's and it's going to be impossible to escape ads now at this point. Uh, I mean, even still, even uh, years ago when Netflix launched, it, I would have said like that, that like that was you. We were in and good, and we should have not taken it for granted. Because I I see people, you know online all the time talking about how they've never seen ads and i'm just like well <laughs> you you are lucky people because uh you're not you're not you know, i mean you're wasting that money to to watch stuff uh when you could do when you could just pay five bucks for a peacock and not have to worry about uh spend another five bucks <laughs> i don't know what i'm talking about anymore hey let's move on to this other story this comes from deadline written by max goldbart bbc's to have fewer linear broadcast services in long term and consolidate under one brand reveals Tim Davies. Now, BBC is the uh the s- distributor for like m- most of the television in uh, over there up in England land. And it is to have to to consolidate their their TV networks would it, it I mean it's like if Disney said Okay, we're only going to have ABC, ESPN, and FX, and Disney Channel. We're only going to have four channels as opposed to the ten they own, and they're going to put everything onto there, and then do a lot of stuff with streaming. Uh, uh, the but BBC is uh, uh, a public service broadcaster, so this this is kind of uh, more realistic and more severe than what I just described with Disney. Tim Davy. Didn't elaborate on an RTS talk uh, that morning, but Deadline understands it could be several years until the move is enacted. The speech signaled the start of a shift to taking linear channels online only that will start over the next decade. Because that's what they are, as they put it, Davies preparing for the digital future. What they have now is they've got BBC News Channel, BBC News World, uh, BBC Four, BBC Three, BBC One and Two. They they know their channels as you know one, two, and four, and all that stuff. Davies, the reason why BBC News Channel and BBC World News combined four right now uh, exists, but it doesn't have original shows, which is I believe why. Um, uh, Great British Baking Show, or what they just call is British Baking Show, moved from four to one or something like that. To many people's surprise, the youth skewing uh, BBC Three went in the opposite direction, relaunching as a linear channel earlier this year. BBC going towards uh, a, a, kind of a digital future is a very... This is this is a, a conversation, yeah. For I mean, they're right for ten to twenty years from now, because it's if if PBS, which is uh, you, I think you're supposed to get free channels, and that is one of the ones you're supposed to get for free uh, with ra- with rabbit ears or with an antenna hooked up to your television. Um, I b- I believe I don't know, and I don't know if uh, England and BBC and in, in Europe if they operate in the same vein as the FCC over here in America. But I do, I do think that this is kind of foretelling what could happen to, uh, again, networks like PBS over here, which is something that everybody can have. But as we get, as internet becomes more readily available, and, and it is still not as readily available in a lot of places around the United States, um, I mean, at this point, it should be an inalienable, inalienable right, like food and water, which aren't always inalienable rights. Um, but I mean, it's BBC being digital only. They they have the infrastructure at least to push uh, some type of uh, uh, ISP, you know, broadband stuff over there. But I don't I don't know. It's because uh, I, I don't know a, a general a, a lot about uh, BBC. Uh, uh, well, I do. <laughs> Uh, let's see. They're going to invest in the BBC brand and move faster to regulate for future success. 
they want to uh, own their IP, more or less. BBC's current 5.3 billion quid annual income can just about keep the corporation afloat with prices soaring and license free uh, fee frozen for the next two years. Hmm. And uh, there you have it. Hey, but speaking of, uh, I, mentioned, uh, I, mentioned, I mentioned Disney earlier. This comes from CNBC. Written by Lillian Rizzo, Alex Sherman, Sarah Witten. Who will be Disney's next CEO? Here are the top contenders to succeed Iger. There are a few people. Yeah, Disney's not going to just rest on the laurel that, um, that Iger is the only person that can run the company for the next couple of years. Uh, Iger's got a, 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 I don't know if it's a contract, but uh, he he's going to be with them for uh, at least two years, it looks like. Yes, it is going to be two years. Who are the people that could potentially take his spot? Well, there's one woman in the lead. Yes, I said woman. This comes from Deadline, Jill Goldsmith, Dominic Patton. Disney's Christine McCarthy emerges as top CEO contender to uh, succeed Bob Iger. CFO was King Killer, who took down Bob Chapek. Well, uh, again, rem- uh, this broke over the weekend. Chapek was supposed to uh, introduce uh, what's his name, Elton John, at that last that last concert that aired on Disney Plus, and then at the last possible second, Iger was brought back to Disney, and Chapek's dreams were dashed. <laughs> Imagine you get to introduce one of the biggest <laughs> musical acts in the world, and then all of uh, all of a sudden, you got you got to be like, "What? My dream is gone." I laugh, and apparently, they, I mean, that can happen to anybody. It can happen to me. Now, one of the people, as the CNBC article states, was uh, Dana Walden, and if you follow any type of uh, entertainment business news, hey, no. I tell cats not to do stuff. Dana Walden is a uh, has been with the Disney company for a minute now. Let me let me double check. I got oh she's got her own Wikipedia page. <laughs> she's with the Fox Television Group, the FTG as I call it. But she's been with uh, excuse me, she's been with Disney for since June 2022. She got a couple of kids. Uh, <laughs> she uh, is uh, she arrived at Hulu. Wait, hold on, let me see. Oh, okay. All right. So she's the chairman of Disney General Entertainment Content, overseeing ABC Entertainment, ABC News, Disney branded television, uh, and, and, you know, just a bunch of other stuff, as well as Hulu, Freeform, and all that, some other junk. Uh, she she helped, uh, she's helping lead this company right now. She's won a Lifetime Achievement Award from Harvard Undergraduate Women in Business. She's accomplished a lot. And she's now running one, helping run one of the biggest companies uh, in the world. Excuse me, she's been with Disney since 2019, but she replaced Peter Rice in 2022 when he uh, was <coughs> let go by JPEG. I think Dayton Walden is one of the one of the people that they could definitely choose because she's doesn't have that much controversy. Doesn't have any controversy from what I can tell. And uh, she's she's helped uh, Chapek usher in the uh, the the turn of uh, Scarlett Johansson's pay dispute. Did she? One of his missteps was the pay dispute. Anyway, Walden took her role in June after Rice was ousted by Chapek. Like Rice, Walden came to Disney in 2019 as part of the Disney's acquisition of 20th century 21st centuries. Fox's assets. At the time when she was brought up to the big league, well, to Rice's job, rather, Disney's board had put its support behind Chapek. Still, Walden lacks experience on business decisions and has focused her time on the creative side. Uh, Peter Rice could come back. There's also Alan Bergman. Hold on. We talked about Walden. I want to talk about Christine really quick. Christine McCarthy is uh, definitely one of the reasons why Chapek had to leave. Currently, she is... We'll get to that in a second. She's uh, currently the CFO, Veteran Chief Financial Officer. 
Uh, she would also, her and Walt would also be the first female CEOs in Disney's uh, 100, almost 100 year existence. CFOs are key managers, but more often than not low profile, working behind the scenes, merging, uh, emerging during earnings season and occasionals uh, investor at conference, occasionals, occasional investor conferences. Rarely do they take center stage, especially in the heat of the battle among the troops, into a messy ouster of their boss, and rarer do they still become king. I got to change the lighting on this because it's getting too dark over here for me. It's getting too dark, too dark. Here we go. And there we go. Things you can do on the fly. A steady hand in the previous Iger, Iger regime and uh, when Chapek was in charge, McCarthy was influential in helping to successfully engineer a string of mergers and adept at raising and husbanding cash during the depth of COVID. Not a fan of that. I am definitely not a fan of that. I uh, she's I think she's of, of of the money manager person is uh is is someone who could lead the company but again remember what happened when we put a business person in charge of Disney where they uh, ruined it I mean JPEG they they took the they took the company down to a level where it just didn't make sense uh, and, and treating it like it's a business as opposed to like it, treating it like it's a business business as opposed to a family business. And I think that is a good way to put it because, yeah, Iger runs with it on an emotional level. But isn't that what Disney is in the end? Even if they are a business where uh, they were afraid to <laughs> talk about queer stuff and talk about and do race stuff. Uh, I mean, in the end, it's still something where it's you're supposed to all uh, come together as one big family and love each other and, and blah, 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 blah. There's also Alan Bergman, who has been with Disney for uh, two decades plus five, 25 years. He's the chairman of Disney Studio Content and spearheaded the integration of Iger's acquisitions into Disney's overall content pipeline. So he's the reason why uh, Disney Plus is for families and kids and Hulu is for uh Everybody, I guess. I don't know. It's supposed to have all the R-rated, M-rated stuff, R-rated stuff, but now that's on Disney. Doesn't matter. In addition, Bergman has rapport with many creatives in Hollywood. I believe, and don't quote me on this. Uh, oh yeah, Bergman is. Uh, uh, he could. He could have. He could have. You know, chatted with uh, with Scarlett Johansson instead of making it a whole live kerfuffle out in, in the public. But I believe. Bergman might be a producer as well. Don't don't quote me on that. Uh, okay, Alan Bergman, Disney, Wikipedia, Walt Disney Studios division. Well, he's a chairman. We know that. Yeah, you can definitely see his name on movies like The Lion King, Jungle Cruise, Cruella, Frozen, Zootopia. Yeah, you can definitely see his name. All over Disney Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> he might, I mean, I th like like Dana, I think he'd be a, a good option. Uh, but again, I think, you know, maybe it, would, it wouldn't hurt to have two people in charge. Uh, like Bergman and Christine. I know I skipped over Dana, but I'm sorry. And if he can, and if he has a relationship with Disney creatives already, then you can have left brain, right brain doing their thing. Now they also the CNBC article also floats outside possibilities, which is a definite a definite w thing that can happen. But working within the company is uh, much smarter than than uh, working outside of. And they have people like uh, Kevin Mayer, who's the co-founder and co-chief executive officer of Candle Media, chairman of Dazen Group. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, you know, and, and I don't know who this guy is, and I uh, don't really care for him, but, I th <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it's like when uh, Howard Schultz came back from uh, leaving. He left Starbucks, and then he was gone for, what, two years, and then he came back, and now he's leading the company and, and, and crapping on unions and everything. Um, 
It is, uh, oh, this mayor guy helped develop and launch Disney Plus since leaving Disney's had a short stand as CEO of TikTok and later joined billionaire Lynn Blavtnik's, Blavtnik's investment firm, Access Industries, and became chairman of sports streamer Dazen. Uh, I mean, mayor helped this Disney Plus thing, but, you know, that's, I think I think what it takes is to, to run Disney and, and, and short to run any company, any of these, uh, from Paramount to uh, to, to Warner, uh, I, I think it, it, you have to have a relationship with the talent. You have to have a business mindset, but you also have to know when you are wrong. And uh, I mean, it's uh, you know, is it humility? Is it what? Well, I mean, what is it in the end? But when you when you find out when you when you recognize that. You can you don't have all the answers and and that uh, bulldozing your way through letting people go and 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 firing them or canceling shows as is the case at Warner Bros Discovery uh, or or just uh, having the carelessness to to turn Disney from uh, again I'm not the biggest Disney fan but turn it from this family empire and again it was and before and before let's, let's let me get this straight before chapek it was bad it was like there were there were things where you just go oh disney is just on the wrong side of the history here uh however it is when 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 there are points where you know when scarlett johansson has to go public with how little she made and and uh when when you know when the world's population of uh queer folk are are held essentially at gunpoint in Florida, and and you and you won't make a decision either way. Companies like that now have to make that have to make that choice, and there 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 is a right way and a wrong way, especially in that don't say gay thing and with the um, Scarlett Johansson thing. But there's a time to talk and there's a time to not talk and or or listen. I don't want to say listen because the company's not going to listen, but there is a time to talk and a time to listen, and uh, and. And JPEG just didn't do that, and uh, and it's, and you know at some point I'm thinking partially this is partially true of uh, uh, Zaslov over at and I'm not saying this because I was let go because <laughs> my contract wasn't renewed, but uh, the uh, there's there's a point where you know he's these people aren't listening, but now I mean I think Zaslov kind of is slightly turning around with hiring. Um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy guy. What's his name? The guy who keeps putting his wife in things. Uh, the guy who thinks that music is a personality. Uh, what is his name? James something. <laughs> what is his name? Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I refuse to look it up. I, I, I have the computer in front of me. Anyway. But yeah. Is there anything wrong with Bob Baggish? I follow Bob Baggish on um, LinkedIn. Is there anything wrong with him? So far, not seeing anything wrong. Nothing racist came up. <laughs> but these companies all have to talk about profitability and how, and in the end, how everything works and and uh, if it'll work for them. So you can't really be too mad. Any hoosers, I'm done with this. Listen. If you like what you heard here, head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where uh, we've got it's just it's a buku dolores worth of things. You can uh, t- uh, watch a video version of the show, youtube.com slash cpluscomedy. Don't know why you would. <laughs> you can watch also on youtube.com slash cpluscomedy, our premiere show, uh, News Time, which is back, baby. I'm actually two episodes behind now, but... <laughs> The, these are two final scripted episodes of the year. Uh, and they will be good. Because one of them has been planned for, I don't know, a year or some change like that. So definitely check that out. If you want to see the video interview of those two, uh, Megan Amram and Adam Devine, you can u- go to uh, youtube.com slash C comedy. They're under the interviews. I'm bad at naming things. The Constitutionals, the interviews, news time. Uh, three shows. And they're all horrible. If you want to follow us on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Uh, what are the other ones? Uh, hey, that's it. That's it. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at C Plus Comedy, me, at Chad Black White. 
rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends. This show is fantastic. And yeah, we'll see you later. Goodbye.